This lesson will show a couple of examples of how to verify properties of quadrilaterals. And in the first example, we're given four points to plot. Uh, A is the point negative 2, 3. B is the point 2, 6. C is the point 10, 4. So there's 10, 4. And D is the point 8, negative 2. And once you have the four points plotted, join them in order, drawing the four sides. Notice that we're not joining every vertice to every other vertice because then we would also include the diagonals. We don't, don't need these diagonals here, just the outsides of the quadrilateral. And we're asked to join the midpoints of the four sides in order, so we need to find the midpoints. So here's the midpoint formula, and I'll call the midpoint of A, B, E. And so the midpoint formula says to average the coordinates, so we would add 2 and negative 2 and divide by 2. And the same with 6 and 3, we'll add those and divide by 2. And so E ends up having coordinates 0, 9 halves. So we'll plot 0, 9 halves. Next, we'll call F the midpoint of BC. So we would add 2 and 10 and divide by 2. Also 6 and 4 and divide by 2. So F is the point 6, 5. G is what we'll call the midpoint of CD. So we would add 10 and 8 and divide by 2, and also 4 and negative 2 and divide by 2. So G has coordinates 9 and 1. So there's G. And then finally, H is the midpoint of the uh, fourth side. So we'd add negative 2 and 8 and divide by 2 to get an X coordinate of 3. And the same with uh, the Y coordinates 3 and negative 2 get added dividing by 2 we get a half. So h is the point 3 1 half. So joining the four midpoints in order, here's the quadrilateral we get. It certainly looks like a parallelogram. It almost looks like a rhombus, but it won't always be a rhombus. We are, however, going to prove it is a parallelogram. And we'll prove it's a parallelogram by showing that the opposite sides are parallel. And we'll use the slope formula to do that. So we're going to start with EF over here. So using the slope formula, 5 minus 9 halves in the numerator and 6 minus 0 in the denominator. Now 5 is the same as 10 halves. So 10 halves minus 9 halves is 1 half. 6 minus 0 is 6. Now the way you divide a half by 6, remember this means division here, is you take the numerator, the half, and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal of 6 is 1 6. So 1 half times 1 6 multiplies to 1 12. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 6 is 12 in the denominator. And next we're going to take a look at finding the slope of HG. And so 1 minus a half in the numerator and 9 minus 3 in the denominator. Now 1 minus a half is a half, and 9 minus 3 is 6. So notice we have exactly the same calculation as up here. We don't really need to repeat this step again, so this should certainly equal 1 12th. So EF and HG are parallel. Now the last two sides, so FG is over here. So we would subtract 1 minus 5 over 9 minus 6. And so 1 minus 5 is negative 4, 9 minus 6 is 3. So FG has a slope of negative 4 thirds. Now the last side to investigate is EH. And so a half minus 9 halves in the numerator, 3 minus 0 in the denominator. Now a half minus 9 halves would be negative 8 halves. And negative 8 halves is the same as negative 4. So in the numerator, this does simplify to negative 4, and of course 3 minus 0 is 3 in the denominator. So those two sides have the same slope and are also parallel. And so since opposite sides are parallel, we would conclude that E, F, G, H is a parallelogram. In the second example, we're asked to draw the quadrilateral with these four vertices, P, Q, R, and S. So P is negative 2, negative 3. Q is 3, 5. 
R is 7, 6, and S is 6, 2. And so we'll join the four sides in order, P to Q to R to S and back to P. And that's our quadrilateral. Now it's certainly, we're at, it asked an A to show that this, is a, is a, this quadrilateral is a kite. And if you flip to the glossary in your textbook, this is the definition of a kite. It's a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent sides equal. So these two sides are equal and these two sides are equal, which is what this looks like up here. So to show it's a kite, we're gonna show that PQ and PS are equal in length and also that QR and uh, SR are also equal in length. So that's how we're going to answer A. So we use the distance formula. There's the distance formula. So we'll start with PQ. And so we will go 3, take away negative 2, which is the same as 3 plus 2 squared, plus the difference between the Y coordinates, 5 minus negative 3 is the same as 5 plus 3 squared. Now, this is 5, 5 squared is 25, and this is 8, 8 squared is 64. So we're adding 25 and 64, which adds to 89. So the length of PQ is the root of 89. Now we'll next do PS, and so we will go 6, take away negative 2, or 6 plus 2 squared here, and 2, take away negative 3, which is the same as 2 plus 3 squared. So again, we have 8 squared is 64, and this is 5 squared is 25, so 64, 25, once again add to 89 underneath the root. So the length of PQ and PS certainly are the same. They're both root 89. No need to change these to decimals because if we change them to decimals, they'll just be the same decimal, so we don't need to do that. So QR, we will go 7 take away 3 squared plus 6 take away 5 squared. So that's 4, and 4 squared is 16, and this is 1. 1 squared is 1, so we're adding 16 and 1. So the length of QR is just the square root of 17. So one last time, we'll take a look at now the last distance here is from uh, S to R or R to S. So 7 minus 6 squared here and uh, 6 minus 2 squared here. Once again, this is 4, 4 squared is 16, and this is 1, 1 squared is 1. So 16 and 1, once again, underneath the radical, add to 17. So the length of SR and QR are both the root of 17. So this certainly is a kite. Now in B, we're asked to find the slopes of the two diagonals. So we'll draw in the diagonals. There's the long diagonal, and here's the shorter one. And it looks like those intersect at right angles. We are going to prove that. So find the slope of the two diagonals. There's the slope formula. So first of all, QS. We will go 2, take away 5 in the numerator, and 6, take away 3 in the denominator. So 2 minus 5 is negative 3, and 6 minus 3 is positive 3. Dividing those, we get a slope of negative 1. So now let's find the slope of the long diagonal, the PR diagonal. So 6 minus negative 3 over 7 minus negative 2. Uh, in the numerator, this will be 9. In the denominator, this will be 9. 9 divided by 9 is positive 1. Now remember, if two line segments are perpendicular, their slopes are negative reciprocals, or they multiply to negative 1. These certainly are reciprocals. They're actually fairly simple reciprocals because they are whole numbers. Uh, negative 1 over 1 is the reciprocal of 1 over 1. Uh, they also are opposite in sign, or we can say that this slope times this slope is equal to negative 1 if we multiply them. So the uh, two slopes are negative reciprocals, which means that uh, the two diagonals are perpendicular. So this is a, just a concluding statement. Uh, PQRS is a kite because PQ and PR are the same length and also QR and QS are the same length. And also the diagonals uh, QS and PR are perpendicular because their slopes are negative reciprocals. And that's the end of the lesson.